Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Natoya and I'm here to help you start traveling the world. So in this video guys, I'm going to give you the step-by-step -step guide to planning your trip to Croatia on a budget. So this video is the very last video in my Croatia series. So my Croatia series is all about budget traveling in Croatia. It's about 12 to 13 videos very specific videos to help you travel Croatia on a budget. And I'm covering everything from when to go, where to go, what to do, finding a cheap accommodation, flight, everything. So if you are in the process of booking your trip to Croatia, this video is gonna be super duper helpful. So make sure you watch until the end. So I'll link that playlist in the description below and above. And make sure you also download the checklist in the description below to help you plan your trip to Croatia. All right, so first things first, let's talk about the best time to visit Croatia. So of course, if you wanna do like a beach vacation, the best time would be to come in the summer, right? But if you are a budget traveler, I suggest you skip the beach and you visit Croatia during off season because during off season, everything is so much more cheaper. Summertime is pretty much the worst time to visit Croatia. It's crazy busy. That's the time of year all the tourists from all over Europe and the US, they want to come visit Croatia and have like a Mediterranean vacation. So I don't recommend coming in the summertime. So based on what a tour guide told me when I was in Zagreb and a little bit of research I did online, I feel like the best time to visit Croatia would be in October. It's not too hot and the tourist season just finished the month before in September. And also you can try out the winter time too to see what the rates are then. But again, I highly recommend just sticking with the fall. It's not too cold and it's not too hot. The weather is just perfect. All right, guys, now let's talk about where to visit in Croatia. So the thing you're gonna love about Croatia, like the tourist destinations, the places that people are talking about and you see tons of pictures of, they are not overrated. They are actually really great places to visit. So unlike a lot of, a lot of cities in Europe that are actually overrated, Many of the cities that you hear about in Croatia, they're not overrated. They're awesome and breathtaking. And definitely, I would suggest you take the tourist track. So where you're going to go in Croatia, of course, depends on how long you'll be in Croatia. But we were in Croatia for six and a half weeks. And we went pretty much from the bottom of Croatia to the top. We went to Zagreb, Pula, Zadar, uh, Split, Dubrovnik, and Castella might be missing one city but we pretty much sampled Croatia but I'm just gonna give you like a rough itinerary of where to go based on like a number of days so if you're in Croatia for three to five days I suggest you just go to Split and Dubrovnik if you're in Croatia for from seven to ten days I suggest that you go to Split Dubrovnik um, one or two days in Zadar and then you can you can take a day trip to uh, Havar Island or one of the islands, just a day trip somewhere, or a day trip to Kirkland National Park. So as you can see guys, I don't recommend going to a ton of places when you get to Croatia. There's so much to do in Split and Dubrovnik alone. Forget about the islands and uh, the national parks. There's so much to do there alone. I suggest that you don't like overbook your trip and try to do too much in one day or go, go to many different places in a short period of time. Just focus on a split Dubrovnik and the islands in that area if you're, in Cro if you're in Croatia for 10 days and less. Just focus on the tourist track, you will not regret it. It's fabulous and it's worth it and it's not overrated. And one tip I have to give you is that if you're coming to Croatia and you wanna see, you wanna see most of the country, I recommend that you start at one end of the country and work your way down. So for example, start from Zagreb and go to Dubrovnik or start from Dubrovnik, Dubrovnik and go all the way up to Zagreb. It's really cheap from different areas of Europe. It's really cheap to fly into Split. You might be tempted to fly into Split and then go down to Dubrovnik, then go back up to Split and then go up into the country. But I recommend that you just start from one end and move it to the other because you'll be wasting money doing it that way. So of course, do the math, whichever work, whichever option is um, cheaper, cheaper for you and saving you money, do it. But I'm j I just wanted to let you know, it's just best to start at one end and go down the other. All right, so now that you know where you're going in Croatia, let's talk about how to get super cheap tickets to Croatia. So as you probably know already, if you've done any simple flight search to Croatia, 
it's kind of expensive to get a direct flight here. I think they're starting direct direct flights from Dubrovnik, from Miami to Dubrovnik or something like that. But um, it's super expensive to get flights directly from Croatia, from the US to Croatia. So you're going to have to book two separate flights. This is the cheapest way to get to Croatia. So what you're going to do is you're going to get a flight from your city. Let's say you, you live in New York, New York into a major airport in Europe, for example, London or Dublin or Paris, wherever, to a main airport in Europe. That's your first flight. And then your second flight is going to be from that airport into Croatia. This is by far the cheapest way to do it. So I don't want to get into this too much because I made a video all about how to get cheap flights. I'll link it above and below. But just to quickly let you know, what you would do is you would go to skyscanner.com. You would enter your city you're leaving from and then put everywhere. And then you would see the cheapest flight into Europe and make sure it's a major airport. So for example, London or whatever. And then you would see, then you would see how much it would cost to get from London into, let's say, Dubrovnik. Okay, and just work the math out and make sure that it's actually cheaper to do it that way. The airlines you would use from getting to the European city into Croatia would be some budget airline like Ryanair or EasyJet. So for example, what we did, we flew from New York to Dublin and then Dublin to Split. So here are some things you need to look out for when doing this. First things first, make sure that you have the same baggage allowance for both airlines. So if uh, one air, the first airline is allowing you 50 pounds make sh and you have 50 pounds, make sure that you're allowed 50 pounds for that other airline too. The second thing is make sure you have enough time connecting to the flight going to Croatia. So if you're landing in London at 5 p.m. and your flight to Croatia is at 6 p.m., that's not going to work because you still need time. You have to check out. You have to go through immigration and then you have to check back in for the second flight. And of course, go through security. So guys, make sure you check out the video on what to pack for Croatia. So I'll link it above and below. There's just a few items that, need, that you need to pack with you when traveling to Croatia. So make sure you check that out. All right, guys. So next, now that you have your dates, the next thing that you have to do is book travel insurance. So I won't get into this too much because I talked about this a lot in many different videos, the importance of having travel insurance. But you need travel insurance. It's not only about uh, um, having protection in case you get sick or injured. It's also about, you know, having a protection from if you lo lose your baggage, if your flight is delayed or if your flight is canceled. So guys, please uh, protect yourself, get travel insurance. You can use uh, insuremytrip.com, which is a travel insurance search engine to find the best travel insurance for you. Or you can just use World Nomad Travel Insurance. I've been using them for years. They cover a lot of things. They're reputable. They have really good reviews. So I trust them a lot. I'll link it below. I'll link both insuremytrip.com and World Nomads in the description below. But whatever you do, just make sure you're protected while traveling Croatia. All right, guys. So next, you have to find somewhere to stay. So I made a video all about this, but I'll just get into it a little bit. I highly, highly recommend that you book Airbnbs when traveling Croatia. We booked a total of eight, eight Airbnbs all over Croatia. And I have to say it was like the best decision ever on so many levels. Not only was it great, we saved money, we got more space. We, get to, we got to stay in like awesome communities and we avoided the tourist rate for a lot of different things because we were shopping where the locals were shopping. But I really feel like my experience in Croatia was made way better just from staying in Airbnbs, staying in local communities. So like I said, Airbnbs is definitely a, be a better deal, especially if you're traveling with a group. I'm traveling with my sister and her two kids. So of course we need space and then we need a, a lot of amenities. We need a washing machine, um, we need a dishwasher, we need a lot of things. We were able to get all of those things from an, booking an Airbnb. Also, we have a full kitchen to cook meals and save money. So guys, if you are a budget traveler, again, I highly recommend you booking an Airbnb, if only just to save money on food, Food in Croatia is not very expensive, but it's just still a great way to save money. But if Airbnb is not your thing, I recommend that you, you use hotelscombined.com. 
They are a hotel search engine. It's super cheap. They have a price match guarantee also. So check that out in the description. Or you can use uh, hostels if that's your thing. That's cool too. You can use hostelworld.com. I used to use them a lot when I first started traveling. But the thing about hostels is that you still get a better deal with Airbnb because with hostels, you're sharing a room with people. The costs are sometimes similar with having renting a private room in an Airbnb instead of renting a room in a hostel. So just do the math, see what's best for you. But if hostels is your thing, use hostelworld.com. All right, guys, next, let's talk about what to do when you're in Croatia. Of course, activities vary from city to city and costs vary, but I'm just going to give you some general tips. So I have really, really good news for you. There are a lot of free things to do in Croatia. Honestly, I feel like the best thing to do in Croatia is just to walk in the old, in the old cities and just explore and take pictures and just enjoy yourself and get 10 kuna ice cream. That was really fun for me, just doing that, walking for free and getting a budget ice cream. So don't worry, you're just gonna have a good time exploring the city and it costs you nothing. But if you wanna do some paid like tourist activities, they're affordable too. So I found that the range of tourist activities is like 15 to 30 kunas, which I don't find a lot, so for example, in Diocletian's palace, we paid 30 kunas for the underground part to explore that part. In uh, Zadar Tower, to walk up the tower and explore it, we paid 15 kunas. And for Pula Arena, that was the most expensive. We paid 70 kunas, but I think that was just, I don't, I don't know, it was just that tourist attraction. But just expect to pay between 15 to 30 kunas, which I think is very affordable. Next, if you want to take tours, they are affordable too. You can use the website getyourguide.com for super affordable tours and also viator.com for affordable tours too. So we took a tour in Zagreb, of a walking food tour, a four hour walking food tour. And I think we paid about 30 or $40 each. But it was just like a full four hours of just walking around Zagreb, eating yummy foods, learning all about the city, learning all about Croatian people and the culture. And it was just so much fun and so worth it. In Pula, we took a dolphin watching tour. I think that was like $25 per person. And we had like endless drinks. And they took us to a little island to go swimming. So it was lots of fun. And that was also a full day activity. I think it was from maybe nine to five or something like that. I'll link both of those both of those tours below. So there's so many different tours based on your interests and they're pretty affordable. And then there's the really expensive like private boat tours or private tours. You, there's also that too on getyourguide.com. And finally, of course, you can always book a free walking tour. There's walking tours all over Croatia and there's also a free Game of Thrones walking tour too. I'll link the free walking tour website below. Okay, so now let's talk about some in-country expenses. So one expense that you have to think about and something you don't really have to worry about is eating in Croatia. So you are gonna love eating in Croatia because it's so affordable and the food is so amazing. So don't worry too much about this part of your budget. I made a whole video on eating in Croatia on a budget. I'll link it above and of course it's in the playlist below. But basically, to sum it all up, at your average restaurant, expect to pay $10 to $15 on the higher end, much, much higher end. Let's say $10 to $12 for a meal. And that's for like an average restaurant. At an expensive restaurant, for example, we went to a restaurant right near the walls of Dubrovnik. Expect to pay maybe like $25 Per, for a meal and I'm talking about a glass of wine and a plate of food so for the four of us at that restaurant near the walls of Dubrovnik and also we went to a restaurant in the walls of Dubrovnik the range was like 96 to like 110 dollars it never passed like 115 for the four of us all right so the next thing you have to think about is getting around Croatia on a budget and again good news it's super cheap to get around Croatia you have your option of taking the Uber, um, which uh, we were taking Ubers a lot because it was crazy hot. So especially in Split, 
the Ubers were really cheap. I'm talking about we were paying like four to six dollars to get around split. So you can do that. You can take Ubers. That's mainly what we did because they were so cheap. You can also just stay near the tourist sites um, and walk. You don't really have to rely on Ubers. You can just walk. Usually I recommend not staying near city centers and tourist sites because it's usually more money. But since the Airbnbs in Croatia are so cheap already, um, you can get a great deal on Airbnb even in the city center if that's what you like. Like I said before, I like to kind of stay away from like the tourist bubble. But uh, if, you're, if you kind of just want to walk, trust me, you could find an Airbnb in any budget in the city center. Just check out that video. And in some cities in Croatia, like Zagreb, there is public transportation. So it's, that's an option too. So now let's talk about more long distance traveling. For example, going from Split to Dubrovnik. So of course you can rent a car. If you wanna rent a car for your whole trip, you can rent a car in Croatia. I recommend you use discovercars.com. They have really great rates if you wanna rent a car, but I highly recommend that you just take the long distance bus. I don't recommend you rent a car, especially if you're in Croatia for like five to seven days. I just recommend that you take the long distance bus if you're going from one city to the next. So I did a video on traveling Croatia using the long distance bus. I'll link it above and below. And I found that you can get from Split to Dubrovnik in the month of September for $12, which is pretty cheap, $12 one way. So I think that's way easier than having to rent a car, pay for insurance, pay for gas, not get lost. So guys, like I said, this is my final video in my series, how to travel Croatia on a budget. If you have any questions about traveling Croatia on a budget, please do leave it in the comments below. Make sure you check out all my other videos and download that checklist in the description. Make sure you like this video, subscribe and hit the bell notification. Bye.